Hi, my name is Dr. Wisniewski and I am neonatologist. I am also author of the book Babies Born Early, which is a book written for parents who at the time currently have their premature babies born at less than 32 weeks staying in an ICU. It will help those parents to get knowledge about conditions affecting their babies and it will explain to them, at least in general sense, how those babies are treated. In today's video I want to tell you what kind of medications we use in an ICU to treat newborn babies. Obviously, majority of newborn babies staying in the NICU are premature babies, but not only. They are also full-term newborn babies with different problems that require treatment in NICU. Those medications that I will talk about today can be and are used for both groups, both premature and full-term newborn babies. Let's start first with the group of medications that we can call prophylactic medications. What I mean by prophylaxis is that those medications are given to all newborn babies, regardless whether they are staying in an ICU or whether they are healthy and staying in so-called rooming in ma manner with their mothers in one room all newborn babies receiving those medications. And those three medications are vitamin K, eye ointment, and hepatitis B vaccine. Vitamin K, it's an injection, intramuscular injection that it's given to all newborn babies right after birth. And its purpose is to prevent babies developing severe bleeding disorders during first few months after birth. It's very crucial that all newborn babies receive this medication. Unfortunately, some parents refuse that for various reasons. In our opinion and in opinion of medical societies, every newborn baby should receive vitamin K because it might be life-saving medication for the baby that is at risk of developing severe bleeding disorders after birth. Another prophylactic medication is eye ointment. Eye ointment also is applied to all newborn babies after birth and its purpose is to prevent a infection of the eye that sometimes can be very serious, very severe. And finally, the third medication that we tend to give to all newborn babies after birth is hepatitis B vaccine. Hepatitis B is a viral infection of the liver that can occur in anybody. It um, gets transferred by blood or sexual contact. And we recommend that all newborn babies receive that vaccine soon after birth. Now let's go to medications that are actually utilized almost only in NICU to treat uh, newborn babies. The first group of those medications are antibiotics. There are two most popular, most common antibiotics that we use in newborn babies. Their names are ampicillin and gentamicin. I would say that probably 80% of all antibiotics used in newborn babies and probably 95% of antibiotics used right after birth are ampicillin and gentamicin. Antibiotics are used in newborn babies whenever a baby is sick or very sick and they are also risk factors for infection in a baby. We don't want to wait for a baby to get very very sick so many times we start those antibiotics we conduct some investigations usually blood, urine or sometimes spinal fluid mm, tests and if they are negative baby is getting better or stable we can stop those antibiotics within less than 48 hours after birth. If baby develops infection later on during their stay in NICU, sometimes those infections might be very, very serious and sometimes babies need to be treated with antibiotics for 10 days or even longer. Another medication that we often use in NICU, particularly for premature babies with breathing problems or premature lung disease, 
It's called surfactant. Surfactant is a substance naturally occurring in premature baby's lungs, or actually everybody's lungs. And the role of that surfactant is to prevent lung collapse during exhalation. When we exhale air from our lungs, the tiniest parts of our lungs called alveoli could collapse if it was not for surfactant. Unfortunately, premature babies don't have enough of that substance surfactant or that surfactant is malfunctioning. Fortunately, our scientists were able to synthesize it or derive it from animals and we have that substance available as a medication. It was discovered actually in late 80s and early 90s and ever since it is life-saving medication for babies in need. In olden days, we used to administer that surfactant through what we call breathing tube, small plastic tube that was placed through baby's mouth into baby's lungs. And those babies were always on the ventilators. Nowadays, some babies are not on ventilators and we can provide that life-saving medication using the rosolizing machines or some tiny catheters and baby does not have to be on a breathing machine instead they are on what we call CPAP machines. Those are a little bit less aggressive um, breathing supporting uh, machines. Another group of medications that we may use in newborn babies are um, medications regulating blood pressure or elevating baby's blood pressures. Sometimes extremely premature babies or very sick babies or babies with severe infection that is called sepsis may have low blood pressure or hypotension, we call it. And we have different medications, the most common called dopamine, dobutamine and epinephrine. And those are given as uh, intravenous infusions and they can support babies' blood pressures. Also for improving baby's blood pressure, we may use what we call blood um, fluid boluses and sometimes also blood transfusions. Another condition that may require treatment in premature babies, it's called patent ductus arteriosus or PDA. Actually, I wrote an article on my website neopededu.com. You can search for that and I will leave a link down below. But let me tell you what it is. It is actually naturally occurring connection between pulmonary artery and aorta, the major two blood arterial blood vessels in premature babies. And that ductus, it's supposed to be open while baby is in mother's belly. But after baby is born, that blood vessel, it's supposed to get closed. Unfortunately, in premature babies, sometimes it doesn't occur and it may lead to some problems for the baby. If baby is in trouble and we decide that we need to close that vessel, the first line of treatment is a medication and it can be one of the following three medications. One is called ibuprofen, the other indomethacin and the final third one is called acetaminophen. There are some positives and negatives for each one and your doctor, if it's required for your baby, may uh, discuss options for you, which one is the best treatment for your baby. If those medicines don't work, sometimes we offer surgical closure of that ductus if baby really needs that uh, closure to improve its health condition. Another medication very often used in NICU is called caffeine. Caffeine is chemical substance which naturally occurs in tea and coffee and it makes us awake as you know. We drink coffee or tea when we feel tired or when we work at night and we want to be awake, more alert. The caffeine is needed for premature babies if they have problem called apnea. Apnea means that they stop breathing for a short period of time. And again, you can read more about this condition on my website or you can watch another video that you will find on this channel. So we can provide that caffeine to babies and it makes them more alert and it makes them 
to breathe more regularly. So those pauses in breathing disappear or they are a lot less common. Usually babies, premature babies outgrow that apnea with time and once they reach age of 36 weeks or 40 weeks, usually they don't suffer from that problem anymore and caffeine can be stopped. Unfortunately, occasionally some babies have some side effects from caffeine and the most common side effects are um, fast heart rate or what we call reflex. But whenever we are worried about those problems, we can decrease those of caffeine or we can also check for levels in the blood of caffeine to make sure that baby's levels are not too high. And if they are, we can adjust the dose of that medication. Another group of medications or nutrients I would call are vitamins. Premature babies are not receiving optimal nutrition usually, especially during first two weeks when they are receiving IV fluids. So in order to provide to them all those needed nutrients that they need for their growth, we provide in IV fluids also vitamins and different minerals. We have specialized pharmacists that help us with adjustment of those elements to make sure that your baby is getting safe levels of those medicines. And finally, occasionally, very rarely, some babies have what we call cyanotic congenital heart disease. It's an anatomical, abnormal anatomy of the heart that affects their life, affects their oxygenation. And if they are affected in a very severe way and they wait for surgery, occasionally we need to give them medication which is called prostaglandin. And prostaglandin role is to keep the ductus that I was telling you earlier that sometimes we want to close the ductus in premature babies. For some babies with congenital heart diseases which um, requires surgical treatment and we have to wait for that surgery, for those babies prostaglandin that keeps that ductus open actually may be life-saving medication and it's needed. So as you see we have a long list of different medications that we use in NICU to treat premature and full-term newborn babies and actually even though I am, little bit, I am smiling a little bit when I said long list because this list actually contains pretty much 90% or even more of all medications that we use in NICU. So if you compare our specialty in anatology with internal medicine or some other specialty, we really don't use a lot of medications. The reason for that is that the most common problem for our patients is the fact that they were born prematurely, too early. So it means that actually the best treatment for them is time to make them grow properly, to make their growth optimal and uh, not disturbed by any other conditions. So in neonatology, we just try to fix different minor problems to allow baby to outgrow most of the conditions that are affecting them due to their prematurity. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to find out more about prematurity and conditions affecting premature baby, I invite you to join my channel, to read different articles on my website. And if you want to support me and also have more organized way of reading about premature, uh, premature babies, I, I encourage you to buy my book, Babies Born Early. You can buy it on Amazon, Kobo and Apple iBooks. Thank you for watching and goodbye.